Though it may not look like it, the Pokemon Company is currently in a tight spot. Ever since the release of Pokemon Go, millions of new fans have entered the fray. The problem is that those fans have very different expectations from Pokemon that the veterans would have, and most of these veterans have been playing the games since they released on the Game Boy in 1998. Or 1996 if you were lucky enough to be living in Japan at the time. Pokemon was a franchise geared towards children, and of course, was largely played by said children. So, with this in mind, is Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee setting out to exclusively appeal to this generation of kids? We'll find out on this episode of Inside Pokemon Switch. Back at E3 2017, Sunikazu Ishihara announced that the Nintendo Switch would be getting a core RPG Pokemon title, and a lot of us were expecting it to come out this year in 2018. Little did we know that we would only be half right, as Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee were announced. The purpose of the Let's Go games are simple, to bring in Pokemon Go players as well as kids that have never played Pokemon. Some might not believe it, but it's even trying to appeal to the longtime fans who have grown up and gotten jobs. But more on that later. Right now, you're probably thinking, why just children who've never played Pokemon? There are a ton of adult gamers who have never touched a Pokemon game either. And you would be right. And Let's Go is also trying to appeal to them as well, albeit to a lesser extent. What do we mean by that? After playing the game at E3 last month, we have some concerns. Look, we're not here to completely judge the game just yet. They still have months to work out some kinks and take into account the feedback from E3. And there are still loads of positive aspects such as the setting of Kanto and the characters we know and love. These games are going to be great nostalgia trips for the longtime fans. We'll get more into that in another episode, so you can say that we're going to get the bad news out of the way first in this video, so we can talk about some goody goodness in the next one. However, let's get to the main and rather scary topic of today. The difficulty. Pokemon games have been getting easier and easier and easier, and unfortunately, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are no exceptions. Given the goals of these games though, it's not that much of a surprise. As we've stated before, the Let's Go games at their core are designed to bring in new fans of the series, namely those who played Pokemon Go. Yes, a lot of fans of Pokemon play this mobile game, but so do many others who can't even spell Pikachu. Like, so many. For example, my kid brother. He's now 10, and his first introduction to the series was with Pokemon Go. Now imagine if he got that same Pokemon Go experience, but in a fully-fledged game. He'd be ecstatic, as any kid would. While you could make the argument that he isn't the only demographic that the Let's Go games are trying to appeal to, you'd be about 25% mm, correct. As demonstrated 20 years ago with Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, it's way easier to hook kids into your kid-friendly franchise than adults who have been playing other games for the past two decades. And it all boils down to this. The difficulty. The Let's Go games have significantly decreased the amount of grind from previous Pokemon games, meaning that random encounters and wild battles are a thing of the past. You'll only be battling Pokemon if they have trainers. Other than that, you'll have to stick with catching them Pokemon Go style. But what about Mewtwo? But back to the main point at hand. Grinding has been reduced to not only to ease in new players, but to help the longtime fans get more out of a single play session. Think about it. You only have about 20 minutes to kill before you head off to work. Would you rather get constantly interrupted by a wild Pokemon, or know where they are at all times and avoid them? Come on dude, this isn't 1998 anymore. You have a spouse and kids to feed. Your life is dedicated to them, not the grind. I'm sorry, but this is reality. Face it like an adult. For me, as a Pokemon veteran from 2000, yeah we got Pokemon Yellow late, it is odd to not battle and weaken wild Pokemon in order to catch them, as it removes some of the excitement and struggle found in the original Pokemon games. Even so, I must say that I'm not strongly against this inclusion in a transitioning title, meant to welcome new, young and old players unfamiliar to mainline Pokemon mechanics. 
My problem is rather tied to the gym battle requirements, where I need at least one Pokemon of a specific type that the gym leader is weak to. I just have to wonder, is it an issue these days to let players learn through failure? The first generation of Pokemon was just that, a learning through failure experience. If you went recklessly to stronger trainers or gym leaders without knowing their weaknesses, or grinding, you would get a solid whooping. Then you would have to swallow your pride, get out there, grind and catch the correct Pokemon, or buy certain potions in order to outperform or outlast your opponent. Now I will not complain about the reduction of the endless grinding as most of us these days don't have time or patience to go through that struggle. But back to the topic at hand, what is so different to the gym leader guides this time around? Well, according to recent media updates, they will ask the player if you have certain Pokemon types. If your Pokemon have high enough levels, remember that all your Pokemon gain experience at the same time when battling trainers or catching wild Pokemon and through other demands. Our only guess for these requirements is that you will not have a too hard time with the given gym leader. A good example illustrating this notion is to set a quota in order to face the leader of the pewter gym, Brock. Here you have to at least present the grass or water Pokemon. Nothing astonishing if it wasn't for the fact that Brock's rock type Pokemon are weak to exactly that. So what are we witness to here? The dumbing down of Pokemon. Yes, you could agree that it adds some challenge by the fact that you need to go out into the wild, locate a water or grass type Pokemon, catch it and then come back in order to be allowed to face Brock. But with that being said, let us hope that this will not be the case for every gym leader or forbid the Elite Four and Champion battles in the game, as that would ruin some of the original magic of Pokemon Yellow. Why you ask? Since the gym battles, the battles against the legendary Pokemon, the Elite Four and finally the Champion were some of the big highlights of boss battles in the game. If you change or dumb down these too much, the magic will be gone. And this brings us to the following point. Should Pokemon Let's Go be so easy or handholdy? No. Of the lack of multiple difficulty settings, it appears that we'll have no option than to play this dumbed down Pokemon Go version of Pokemon Yellow. For us veterans from those days, it seems to an extent that Pokemon Let's Go might be a missed opportunity at giving a true and worthy remake of Pokemon Yellow. The reason I state this is that Pokemon Red was remade nearly flawlessly with Pokemon Fire Red, which was a general improvement of the core experience while keeping most of the original mechanics. Based on what we have seen, Pokemon Let's Go is doing the most changes to its core gameplay and progression, which is sad to see. But could that at least mean that the Pokemon Switch RPG next year will be the challenge we have been waiting for? We're not example of the simplification and dumbing down of the Pokemon formula. This quote by Game Freak's Yunishi Masuda might tell more regarding the future strategy of the Pokemon franchise. As for the 2019 title, we are working with the idea that everyone will be playing on their own Switch. It will have the same kind of feeling as the previous games on handheld systems. Hopefully this means that Pokemon Let's Go might become a side franchise meant to gradually bring people over to the core experience, which we really hope will not be dumbed down. After Pokemon Sun and Moon we thought that there was not much more you could do to dumb down Pokemon, well, Pokemon Let's Go proved us wrong. We might have sounded negative in this video, and to some extent we are, but that doesn't mean that Pokemon Let's Go doesn't have a large number of positive aspects, and it's exactly those we will take a closer look at in the next episode of Inside Pokemon Switch. Thank you so much for watching, and we would love to see your opinion in the comment section down below, as we know there are some strong and polarizing thoughts out there in the Pokemon community regarding the changes to the Pokemon formula in this game. So make sure to like this video, and if you are new, make sure to subscribe and press that shiny notification bell to not miss any of our upcoming uploads. By the way, would you like to make videos for the Commonwealth Realm? We have big plans for this fall and winter and 2019 and need a skilled European editor to reach our production goals. The reason we limit applications to European editors is that we already have two editors from the USA and Canada, and also because of time differences, need another editor to help out Conrad with sudden announcements when we sleep in America. If you are interested, shoot an email to commonwealthrealm at gmail.com for more details. Finally, we want to thank all of our great patrons, and in particular, Kenyatta Ali, for making the expansion to the realm possible. You can contribute as well by heading over to patreon.com slash commonrealm and get some awesome perks like our podcast and much, much more. Until the next video, this was the Commonwealth Realm, and we will see you all there.